The Theory of the Avant-Garde by Renato Poggioli. Futurism. Exactly by virtue of this paradoxical agonism, functioning almost as a positive defeatism, followers of the avant-garde in the arts act as if they were deposed to make dung heaps of themselves for the fertilizing of conquered lands, or mountains of corpses over which a new generation may in its turn scale the besieged fortress. A real and true course au flambeau agonism then transforms itself into futurism, as Bontempelli well understood and showed us in the preceding section. As already observed, the futurist moment belongs to all the avant-garde's, and not only to the one named for it. To generalize, the term is not in the least arbitrary, even in view of Ortega y Gasset's and Arnold Toynbee's use of it as a historic and philosophically generic term to designate eternal psychological tendencies belonging to all periods and all phases of culture. Therefore, the so-named movement was only a significant symptom of a broader and deeper state of mind. Italian futurism had the great merit of fixing and expressing it, coining that most fortunate term as its own label. Indeed, precisely because the futurist moment is more or less present in all the avant-garde's, the best definitions are not those offered by actual and official futurism, which in any case sensed only its most superficial and external aspects. The best definitions come from witnesses outside the specific movement. One of these is again Bontempelli, who, at the end of the passage cited earlier, furnishes, perhaps unwittingly and without wanting to, the definition we seek. In sum, the avant-garde had the function of creating the primitive, or better, primordial condition out of which is then born the creator, found at the beginning of a new series. This means that in the psychology and ideology of avant-garde art, historically considered from the viewpoint of what Hegelians and Marxists would call the historical dialect, the futurist manifestations represent, so to speak, a prophetic and utopian phase, the arena of agitation and preparation for the announced revolution, if not the revolution itself. So evident and natural a political parallel could not escape Leon Trotsky, who in his book of literary theory and criticism defined the historical mission of Russian futurism as follows. Futurism was the prevision of all that, the imminent social and political crises, the explosion and catastrophes of history to come within the sphere of art. We can then sum up the tendency in question by saying that the imitators and followers of an avant-garde movement were con conscious of being the precursors of the art of the future. Hence derives the characteristic impatience of the contemporary soul, which Umberto Saba clearly noted in one of his little book of aphorisms, thinking perhaps not only of our century, but also the Nova Centro movement named after it. The 20th century seems to have one desire only, to get to the 21st as soon as possible. To understand the historical impatience of avant-gardism, we need, first of all, to examine critically the agonistic component of the concept of the precursor.